Welcome back to Harmonize Your Life, conversations on self-care for women of color with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. We'll be right back with our first guest for the month of February. Well, again, I am so excited to have you here with us on, on this month of February as we are starting out a brand new month of episodes on the Harmonize Your Life podcast. Our theme for this month, you know, February is normally Valentine's Day and people are uh, booed up and married couples are, are uh, uh, expressing special love toward one another during this month. And, um, and friends are just, you know, getting together and sharing. And this is, you know, a good month to let the people in your life know that you love them. But this month, we're going to be talking about self-love. Yep, that's right. We're going to be talking about self-love, setting healthy boundaries between family, friends, significant others, and work. Because you know what? I really cannot love my husband and my children and all the other people in my life if I do not love me first. And so that's what we're going to be talking about this month. I have an array of guests that, uh, that will be with us the entire month, the month of February. And my first guest for this month is my friend and my sister, Dr. Billy Boy Cox. Will you please help me welcome Dr. Billy Boy Cox, uh, Pastor Reverend Dr. Billy Boy Cox to our podcast community today. Welcome, Billy. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here sharing with you uh, for this month of February. And this very, very critical topic that you've chosen for the month of February is very, very worthy. And I'm looking forward to just sharing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, let me, I'm going to introduce you properly to our guests, to those that are listening to our audience. Um, so Dr. Billy Boy Cox is called of God to be a preaching midwife, empowering others to reach into the womb of their purpose and give birth. She is affectionately known as the pain navigator. We, we got to talk about that. Um, she currently serves on the board of directors of the Lighthouse Village, an organization that provides transitional housing for women and children. She has also served as interim chair of the board of MSK Foundation uh, and as a board member of the Family Promise of New Rock and Ref Refuge uh, Pregnancy Center. She received the Ser uh, Servant Leadership Award presented by Women's Legislative Caucus of Georgia, the Community Service Award presented by the Newton Rockdale Democratic Divas, the Rockdale NAACP, Jean Williams Community Service Award, the Positive Community Profile Award presented by Professional Football Players Mothers Association, and she served as chaplain of the, of the day for the Georgia State Senate and is a graduate of Leadership Rockdale. Dr. Cox uh, holds a BA in organizational leadership from Mercer University, and she also graduated summa cum laude and, uh, uh, there, and she also holds a master's degree from Mercer's McAfee School of Theology. Additionally, she served as president of Th Theta Phi International Honor Society at the inter uh, Denominational Theological Center, where she received her Doctor of Ministry degree, summa cum laude. She is a licensed real estate agent, a certified relationship coach, founder and lead teacher of now the new Open Door Ministries that she just um, has uh, launched and founded. Um, and so she is also the author of the Up From Oppression and Grow Through uh, your SH, you fill in the blank T, <laughs> grow through the SH blank T you go through. Her third and fourth books, Pain, is a part of the process and wisdom, the wisdom of rituals, routines, and rest I do this year in 2021. She's previously served at the, um, she has historically served uh, as the first female pastor 
of the historic Macedonia Baptist Church in Conyers, Georgia, 148 years. And she was the very first female to pastor that local church. And she resides in Newton County, Georgia. Welcome again, Billy. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for this honor of being here today. Thank you. Well, so I am so glad um, to have you as our guest to kind of um, launch this conversation about self-love. You know, um, this podcast is um, dedicated to women of color and we're having conversations around different topics and aspects of self-care. And um, part and parcel of self-care is this idea of self-love. Um, one of the scriptures that I use um, um, as a foundation um, that guides me as it relates to um, this whole idea of, of self-care and self-love is where Jesus taught us to love thy neighbor as we love ourselves. One of the commandments that we were given by Jesus was to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And I always say, or um, my belief or my take on that scripture is you and I cannot love our neighbor unless we love ourselves. And I can only love you to the degree that I love me. And so the idea of self-love is so critical. And a lot of times in our circles, in theological circles and, and in church circles, we've not been taught to love ourselves. We've been taught that we're supposed to love our neighbor, but we skip over the part of loving ourselves. And so I wanted to just kind of dialogue about what that means for you. What is self-love? When you hear self-love, what does that mean for you? And, um, and we can just kind of take it from there. So as you were, you were talking, that same scripture is what has been resonating with me as I thought about this word self-love. Um, and, and as you say, we cannot possibly love our neighbors if we don't know how to love ourselves. And you talked about in the theological circles where self-love is taught, we're taught to love our neighbors, but it's also sometimes a part of our culture, a part of our, our uh, DNA, a part of our upbringing where we don't see it modeled and nobody talks to us about it. And if we see it, we see it in somebody else's home and we recognize it maybe as fun, but not something that's normal because it's not a part of who we normally are. And for me, self-love is like learning, it was like learning a foreign language because I've always, always taken care of others. My mother, uh, my mother worked, um, my, my stepfather was, was not a good provider and uh, my mother worked all the time. And so I was left to take care of my younger sister. Um, and so I, I, as a child, as a uh, probably a 10 year old, maybe even younger than 10, to take care of my sister while my mother worked. And so all I've ever done is take care of other people. So I know how to take care of other people. I don't know and I'm learning how to take care of me. Wow. So, so all of our lives and all of your life, you've been taking care of other people, right? Yeah. Starting with your sister, your younger sister. How old were you? You said 10? I, I was probably a little bit younger than 10, maybe around eight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, of course, you later on, you got married. Yeah, I got married. Actually, I got married in high school. And, and, and from that marriage, well, we had three children. So I left my mother's house, went to my husband's house, and still started taking care of of him and other people, him and children that we had created together. So all I know is taking care of other people. And I found myself suffering and just really suffering from that uh, as I got older. And I had to come to the place where, I, you know, I, I've gone through so much in my life, so much. Not that anybody else hasn't, but I've gone through so, so many things in my life mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I, I, I neglect. My, I neglected myself. Um, my self-esteem probably was non-existent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That mattered to me meant taking care of somebody else, making sure everybody else was healthy, happy, and whole. I do a lot of teaching to women, and I'm always talking about choosing yourself. And 
I had to realize that, you know, I'm I'm doing exactly what they tell you not to do on an airplane and it's when if they're having to lose oxygen that you put the mask on you before you try to assist somebody else if you're traveling with young children. Well, I'm trying to put masks on other people's faces so that they are getting the air necessary to keep functioning and I find myself suffering. Right, right. And that's that's certainly what we, you know, that's one of the analogies I use when I teach on self-care. Um, with, with, you said something interesting. You said that you suffer behind not taking care of yourself. Can you unpack that just a little bit? In what ways were you suffering by not loving yourself? Because sometimes there are women listening to this um, that may may uh, might be able to identify with you. You've been taking care of people all them all their lives from from an early age all the way through teenage years to young adult years. And now some of us are in our fifties and sixties and still don't know what it means to love ourselves and to take care of ourselves. So you said that you suffered behind that and you talked about low self-esteem as one of those ways, but uh, unpack that just a little more. In what ways did you suffer as a result of not loving Billy? My, my day began for, for as long as I can remember, my day has started with thinking about the things I needed to do for other people to make sure that they didn't miss this, they didn't miss that, they got here, they ate, they their clothes. It was always thinking about what I needed to do for other people. And I would make sure that other people had, you know, everybody had a doctor's appointment if I needed to go pick somebody up to take them somewhere. Everybody else's needs was taken care of. And slowly my health over the years, not only my physical health, but my mental, my mental and emotional health began to suffer. It began to suffer. I became so undecisive because I could not choose well for myself, but I was able to choose well for other people. And so wow. I emotionally and mentally and eventually physically. Okay, so you suffered emotionally, you suffered mentally, and eventually physically because, so there's a price that we pay when we do not take care of ourselves. Absolutely. There's a price that we pay. It's injurious to our soul. It's injurious to us mentally, injurious to us mentally, injurious to us emotionally, and eventually, like you said, it trickles down, and before you know it, we're experiencing um, some trauma, even physically, as it relates to uh, um, um, a lack of caring for ourselves or loving ourselves. Well, Billy, you said something about choosing yourself. You said you teach women to choose you, choose yourself. What are some of the aspects of that? What 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 does that look like for us to choose ourselves? Because you know we're taught as we're women, we're nurturers. We're taught to care for other people in our world. Like I heard you say, when I get I woke up in the morning and I was always planning for or thinking about what everybody else needed, and I never considered what I needed or what was uh, what what I desired or what I needed or what I wanted. Right, and so you talk. You said you teach women. Choose yourself. How do we choose ourselves? Well, well, one of the things that I say is um, it, it's, it almost goes back to the slave mentality and the slave songs of steal away. Sometimes okay. you have to steal away. Maybe you have to get up early in the morning before everybody in the house wakes up so that you can have some time for you to figure out how you're feeling that day, what your thoughts are that day, what your look what your, your needs are for that day. Because once you hit the floor and everybody else is up and moving around, our thoughts, like you said, as women who are mothers and nurturers are making sure that everybody else, that, that everybody else can get what they need, that we have provided, we have presented, we have positioned everybody else to get what they need. But if we don't take some time, it can be time in the bathroom. It can be time... Uh, you know, if you just, if you have a deck or a porch or something, to just sit outside for a few minutes, just in mm -hmm. some fresh air. But we have to make time because what I found was the fear of, the fear of love, the fear of rejection, 
the fear of not being good enough and not being measured and not measuring up the fear of abandonment all of these little girl issues these daddy issues that i call them sometimes. <laughs> yes all of these issues just kind of surface and they have power over us and so there comes a time when we have to take authority over the power that those particular things represent in our lives. And until we do that, we're not going to be able to set healthy boundaries. And that those boundaries include, for me, everybody had access to me. I, uh, you know, as a pastor, everybody had my phone number. And technology makes you accessible to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Now talk about that. Yes, we yeah. are so accessible and everybody had access, has access to us, especially in this technology age. Absolutely. I was, um, I'm, I'm a real estate agent now, but I was a residential home uh, uh, loan officer for 10 years prior to coming into real estate. And one of the things I would do is if an agent would call me at 10 o'clock at night, knowing no banks are open, nobody is going to accept an offer, but they wanted me to get up and pull somebody's credit to see if they might buy a house. And here I am getting out of my bed, going down the hall to my office and pulling credit. And now I, I because that wore me out and it made me begin to be angry with the agents who would do that. And so I didn't know how to say no. Oh, okay. These excuses for why I needed to say no, but no is a complete sentence with a period, with an exclamation point. It's a complete <laughs> sentence. There is no comma. There is no question mark behind it. It's just no. No <laughs> is an answer. And no is empowering when it comes oh. to setting boundaries. It is, it is a powerful word when it comes to setting boundaries. It's no is a powerful word when it comes to setting boundaries. Yes. It wow. Is. Wow. I mean, you're painting the picture. You're painting the picture. I'm glad that you're sharing uh, um, how you've had to overcome this, because sometimes people look at us and they think we have it all together. We, you know, we never struggle in these areas. When you said I, I struggle with low self-esteem, things, the things that have power over me, fear, fear of, of rejection, fear of, of, of loneliness, fear, all those things that make us as women not choose ourselves at times, choose others over ourselves because we have fear. You know, my children um, taught me a term recently called FOMO, fear of missing out. And sometimes I have found that even in my own life, I've had to step back and choose me and not be afraid of missing out, even on an opportunity. Sometimes we feel like an opportunity is going to pass us by, or if we if we say no, we won't get asked to do again, do it again, or participate again, or this door may close and never open for us again. But I've had to learn how to set those boundaries, choose myself, my what I need in this time, and not necessarily what everybody else needs over what I need in this season. So you talked about choosing yourself and you 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 um have women that you um that you mentor, that you empower. I know that you have a women's group that you work with on Facebook on Monday nights. And so how can women be a part of 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 that? Okay, so it's called reset your life. And reset your life just just came to me one day when I was just thinking about all of these things we're talking about now. It's like is that a Facebook group? It is a Facebook group. It's, okay. it's, a Facebook, it's a private Facebook group. It's called Reset Your Life. And so you connect to me and I invite you into the group. And you connect to me by using my name, Billy Boyd Cox. Uh, and then I'll send you an invite that connects you into the group. And the group meets on Monday night at 7 p.m. every Monday. Okay, so I'm putting that on, on the screen. And for those of you who are listening, her Facebook group is Reset Your Life. Facebook group, Reset Your Life Facebook group, okay? And you can go there and um, she's working with women on a regular basis on how to set these boundaries and how to set their life uh, set their life up um, in a way that they can love themselves and love others and still have uh, good relationships with other people. So we're talking with Dr. Billy Boy Cox. I want to just let you know again who we have in the studio with us today, Dr. Billy Boy Cox. Now, Dr. Billy, I want to ask you something. Um, I know that um, 
you are you be, you were married at one point or you you're in transition I, I, where I, that yes okay so how did you get to the place where you you were brave enough to make that change choosing yourself I watched a lot of Diary of a Mad Black Woman. <laughs> Diary of a Mad Black Woman. I listened to your podcast with Dr. Claudette Copeland. Opened my whole mind up like a reservoir. Uh, it just kind of did something that just made me breathe. And I realized at that point, I had been holding my breath for years. I've been holding my breath. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to breathe. And that podcast allowed me, I listened to it several times, and it just kind of broke open a shell and allowed me to be vulnerable. I listened to Brene Brown. I listened to uh, Oprah Winfrey's podcast. And so I listened to words of encouragement from various sources. And then one day I realized I can listen to all of this good information. It's just like reading the Bible. I can read it, but until I open up and begin to apply it, and there's wow. some things, like you have to apply like lotion. So until I was ready to begin to apply some of these strategies to my own life to really, really break free and realize that I must come first, period. I must come first. And sometimes, you know, particularly being in ministry, uh, we over spiritualize some things because saying I must come first sounds yeah. like pride. It sounds like I'm doing something wrong, but no, I have to choose me in order to help you. If I don't become my best self, I'm going to fall apart and be enabler that I have become to other people who's going to take care of me once I'm gone. So wow. I had to realize that and come to come to that decision that choosing me is critical. It's critical. I have to come first. Wow. So you had to make a real tough decision about your station in life as related to choosing you. Yes. And and, and your station in life even in marriage. And would you say that there's some women um that may be listening here that may be in that valley of decision or or having to, it may not be a marriage situation, but it could be work, it could be other relationships, friends. Would you say that it takes courage to choose yourself? It absolutely takes courage. And the thing about it is making, taking a step of courage for yourself. The expectation is, particularly if other people know about it, the expectation is, oh, uh, She's not going to be able to do it. She's not going to be able to do it. She's not going to be able to do it. And once you hear that, you give in to that. And then so so stepping out and then stepping back into the same pool. Of water, oh, okay. Stepping back into that same pool of water. And the water is still the same water. It has not been drained. Nothing has changed about it. The pool has oh. been Oh my God, that's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> that's really yeah, good. That's there. With all the skim, with all the leaves and the trash that is blown in the water, we step back in the water because we are afraid of stepping out again. And so sometimes, and for me, I, I did that. I, I walked out after after 29 years, I walked out and I couldn't stay out because there was a full dependency and I was worried about what other people thought about me. And then my therapist said to me, it is none of your business what other people think about you. When I tell you that was like a hallelujah free moment. Like, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> we don't choose ourselves because we're afraid. It takes yeah. courage. And sometimes we don't choose ourselves because we are afraid of what other people think yeah. about us. Yeah. What are they going to say? Are they going to, like you said, is she going to be able to do it? Is she going to be able to sustain herself? You know, it, it, all the, the things that people say and whisper in corners and things of that nature. But it's not, a, it's not, we can't change what other people think about us. Right, right. And that was I, one of the most freeing statements. Oh my God. <laughs> I felt like somebody had given me the lottery. She was like, it's none of your business. It just is and it's none of your business. 
because we can't change what people think about us, whether it's good or bad, whether we're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. People always have something to say. Wow. Wow. And you're right. People going to talk about you no matter what you do. And I always say people do not have to walk in your shoes. They don't have to live where you are. And uh, as long as they, they they are not responsible for uh, the life that I'm living, they can't not walk in the shoes that I'm walking or the way that I'm walking. Then I cannot open myself up to or be uh, subject myself to their whimsical opinions of me. Right. So I have to do what I know God is calling me to do. And it takes courage, especially when you're in ministry. Like you said, when we're in ministry, we're women in ministry. Right. And so people looking at us and our life is on open display for others to see. And then you have to make a hard decision like you've recently had to make. And I, I remember you going through that. I, we talked about it as friends and I pray with you. And of course, you know, wanting to see things work out for you in, in your marriage. But when you told me, Tony, I need to move on. This is what I know I got to do for me. Then my role as your friend was to support you in that and pray for you that you'll be able to move forward and do what God has called you to do. So you've made some transitions in your life recently where you've cho you had to choose you you're walking in this new place of self-love and setting healthy boundaries in your life with family and friends. You, you know, even you got adult children, you got grandchildren, um, and you've had to set boundaries even there. Yes. Yeah. Even there, you've had to set boundaries and we've talked about some of that. So now in this new place that you're in, tell us, how do you feel? I mean, what are you, what are you discovering about Billy in this season? This new place I call peace. When I put my key in the door, I don't have to worry about mood swings, attitudes. It's called peace. That's my address. Peace <laughs> Avenue, peace street, peace city, peace state. It, it, it is peace. I, I'm discovering what I like about myself. I'm discovering what I dislike, how people invade my space and my time. I, I, I set parameters. Uh, my middle daughter likes to call me every single day, several times a day. I love her, but I said to her, uh, I don't answer my phone for you until 9 a.m. You know, <laughs> it's an emergency. And here, here's how I have grown on, I believe it was on, on maybe January 1st, on January uh -huh. this year, she, was, she had a little commotion going on with her teenage daughter. And so she calls me, my phone rings at 12.30 at night. And um, I pick it up because, you know, I have family uh -huh. for the state, so I pick it up and it's her. Mom, I need you to come over here because I'm about to send this other, and I say, is anything, anybody on fire? You might have believed it. <laughs> <laughs> if they are called 911, and I laid my phone on the nightstand. I didn't even hang it up. I laid it on the nightstand and turned right back over to my next sleep position. You know, before that, I would have jumped up, been in my car at her house trying to help her resolve whatever it was. But wow. there are battles that I have chosen not to be drawn into because people draw us into their stuff because we don't set boundaries. They, oh they my run God. Run out and reeling us in. And I told them I don't fish. I don't even like eating fish. So no, don't throw the bait. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. <laughs> so that, for me, that was growth. And the next morning, I sat up in the bed and I just literally clapped my hands for myself because I passed the test. I passed wow. The I'm just not willing to go down that road. I've been traveling that road with them for a long time. I love them, but 911 is your emergency. I'm not the next call. I really am not. Wow. I heard you say something. I want I just want to point that out. You said people will draw you into their drama. Yes. If we and and if we're not careful, we'll be drawn into their drama because we have not learned how to set healthy boundaries, right. setting healthy boundaries with family, with friends, with, with significant others and with work. Yeah. So talk to us about how have you set boundaries with work? 
um, w- with with my work, particularly with the real estate side of it. I work um, um, a couple of hours in the morning, lead generation, where I make sure I, I do a lot of time blocking now because I, okay. I, I need a nap. What I realized during the pandemic was I need a nap every single day. I, I need one. I do <laughs> <laughs> I block time so that I can take my nap when I need to take my nap, and I'm not apologizing for my nap. I'm not answering the phone during my nap. Phone <laughs> calls we have all day, every day. My mind needs to rest, so I take yeah. a nap, and I, yeah. I, I I'm just free to do it. It's a, yeah. it's healthy for me. It's healthy. It's yeah, I'm nap. I'm telling you, naps are. I, it's one of my friends, uh, I saw somebody post the other day about, is it too early for a nap? I said, honey, a nap is always in order. It's a, a nap is will save your life. I love yeah, naps. Yeah, I said, yeah, I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. I'm, and girl, when I take a nap, it's like going to bed. You know, I, I would t- I would take my clothes off, put on pajamas, wrap my head like it's a brand new night, <laughs> and get up from my nap and wash my face, brush my teeth, and put back on my clothes and keep it moving. But yes, we need that. And you know what, Billy? The older we get, the more we need it. Absolutely. You know, I started thinking about when, when Taylor was little, when all of my kids were little, we used to take an afternoon nap. We we, we got us an afternoon nap. Yes, Lord. The more we get busy, the busier we get in life, we forget that we really need rest, that our bodies are not machines and that we need to give them a pause sometime during the course of the day. Yes. You know, yes. In the Mediterranean to take us. Uh, siesta, you get your siesta wherever you are. Wherever you are. And you know what? And and you know, and in America, you know, there are people watching this, uh, watching and listening to us from all around the world because of the global nature of where we are and uh, um, uh, the technology. But it, we're here in the U.S. And one of the things we can learn from our European brothers and sisters is this idea of siesta. They yeah. stop in the middle of the day they take a nap. Everything shuts down, and you can't do business. You can't. You can't do anything. Everybody's resting, and we don't have that in our culture, in our in American culture. And so we constantly are going and going and going and going until we almost fall out. And so I I hear you saying that you know you you time block. So I asked you how do you set boundaries now in your work? You said time blocking. Is there anything else? I time block and then I take one day a week where I don't do anything. I just do okay. I do just what I want to do, which is like nothing like walk around and look out the windows. I yeah. Sabbath. Really, mm-hmm. I, need, I really need that time because if not, I'm on 24 seven. I'm on and it, it is just not healthy for me. If I run five days a week with no naps and no pauses in between, by the time I get to Saturday or Sunday, particularly when I was pastoring the other church and having to, you know, do all that was necessary to carry, to maintain that and to carry on with that, I'm shifting my screen because the sun has shifted. So it's just okay, that. no problem, no problem. So, uh, you know, having to do all of that stuff just really wears on us and and wears and te- the wear and tear on our body. We can't ride on tires that are meant for fifty thousand miles, way over to a hundred thousand miles. There's nothing left. There's no thread. And we are the same. We need tune-ups. We need alignment. We need to go get our oil changed. We need that good self-care. We need massages and facials. And, oh, my God, we just need to go in and get our bodies exfoliated. We need all of that. We do. And if we don't choose it for ourselves, nobody else is going to choose it for us. Choose for yourself because no one else is going to choose it for you. Wow. I love that. Your concept of choosing for you. Choose you. Choose for you. Choose for yourself. All of that. Making choices. And we make a lot of choices within a day. When you think about all the choices that you make in the course of a day, Mm -hmm. all the choices that we make, how many of those choices are life-giving are self-refreshing. How many of those sources, uh, 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 choices are about me and loving me? Self-love, setting healthy boundaries. How many of those choices are going to help me 
not only love me, but love you. I heard you say something earlier about resenting uh, the, the, uh, the uh, I think you said the agents that were calling you. And, you know, if we don't love ourselves and we just keep ourselves open like that, resentment will set in. And the people that we're supposed to be loving, then we find that we're pushing them away or we're, we're irritable. We can't get along with anybody. And it could be just because I did not do what Jesus said. Love my neighbor as I love myself. We must practice self-love. We must practice setting healthy boundaries. Billy, you told us earlier um, that uh, we could find you uh, on, in your, on your Facebook group, but I also want them to know about uh, Open Door Ministries International. I know that you are um, you just started a church. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about that real quick. Yes, um, you can find me on Facebook uh, on Facebook on Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon at 7 p.m. This Sunday is our first Sunday launching. Open Door Ministries is our Facebook page, and you'll find me right there. It's a vision that the Lord gave me in 2003, but because I was so busy choosing other people, I couldn't choose the path that God had for me, and that's no more. It's manifesting. It's happening this weekend. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I'm so excited that Open Door Ministries is now open. <laughs> yeah, it's open. And, uh, and we're open online because of COVID and all the other stuff. So we're doing what we got to do virtually. But I'm so proud of you, girlfriend. I'm so proud of you. We are so excited for you. You know, we are in your corner. We are, we are there for you, whatever you need. And so I'm excited about this. And you can look Billy up. Um, Pastor Billy, Dr. Billy up at Open Door Ministries. And there's the website there, Open Door Ministries International.org. There's the Facebook page where you can uh, go and uh, look her up at Facebook, Open Door Ministries International, and at Billy Boyd Cox. You can follow Dr. Billy at Dr. Billy Boyd Cox. Follow her at Dr. Billy Boyd Cox on Instagram. She's not much of a, tw uh, a Twitter uh, uh, geek, but you can follow her on Instagram she and Facebook, and you can be a part of the work that she's doing. Women, if you're looking for a place where you can reset your life, you can join her Monday night Facebook group where she is teaching women how to choose themselves. Yeah. How to choose you. And so I'm so excited that uh, Dr. Billy Boy Cox is going to teach us how to choose ourselves, how to get over the guilt of self-love and guilt of self-care, how to um, how to minimize the propensity in, in us to resent the people in our lives because we have not loved ourselves, how to set those healthy boundaries with family, with friends, with co-workers, with, with our boss, with work in general. Some of us are, are uh, uh, we don't have a boss or we are entrepreneurs and we need to learn boundaries. We can't always be working. And so we got to choose ourselves. Thank you so much, Dr. Billy Boy Cox, uh, for helping us. I want to encourage you all to continue to follow the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. Uh, we are bringing relevant conversations right to where you are. We're bringing uh, self-care strategies to you, helping you navigate the, your, uh, uh, your life, navigate through your work, navigate through your purpose and all the things that God has put in your hand to do, but you can't do it to, uh, uh, you can't optimize what God has put inside of you until you take care of yourself, until you operate in self-love. So follow us. Uh, you can find this podcast on Apple, on Google, on Spotify. You can look, you can watch, you can listen and watch this podcast on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. Women, I also want to invite you to join the Harmonize Your Life Self-Care Network. Dr. Billy is a part of the network. Dr. Billy, tell them a little bit about the network, how much you enjoy it. Oh my goodness, it is amazing. We just came back from this absolutely wonderful retreat. We, yeah. so, we did all of that. It was so good. And the presenters, the facilitators are always incredible. 
you want to be a part of this network and you want to be with us when we go to Aruba next year. You don't want to read about it when we get back. You want to be there to be a part of it. Because one of the first things that I learned from the very first one that you, you did, um, that I attended, was you talked about the difference between balance and harmony. Balance yes. And harmony. And I used that when I, when I decided to, to shift and change and transition and learn how to love myself because I had to learn how to harmonize between loving and losing, loving and losing. Oh, girl, we gonna have to come back and we gotta pick this up. Our time is almost up, but you just dropped some, as they say in Clubhouse, you just dropped some gems. How do we harmonize and balance or harmonize between loving and losing? And you walked that walk. And I remember you walking that walk. It was a tight rope, but you did it. And now look where you are, ladies. Join the Harmonize Your Life Self-Care Network. I promise you, you will be blessed. When you join, go to my website at drtonyalvarado.com and you can sign up for the Self-Care Network right there on the homepage of the uh, of, of my website is the link to the, uh, to the Self-Care Network. Join it. Join us on our journey of self-care. That's what we're about. We're about changing the narrative for women of color. We have started a self-care movement for women of color. We're not only taking care of ourselves, but we're concerned about you taking care of you. And so we're bringing relevant strategies to you so that you can walk away with something that you can apply to your life and improve your level of self-care and self-love. Listen, Dr. Billy, I am so, so glad that you decided to be a part of this network and that you came on today. We always have such, such good conversations. So I really feel like we just let them eavesdrop in on the kind of stuff we talk about all the time. We just letting them hear how we roll all the time. And so thank you again for, for, uh, for being here. I want you all to make sure you follow Dr. Billy on Instagram, follow her on Instagram, go and support her new ministry, Open Door Ministries. Do that. Women, go and support or be a part of her Facebook group on Monday nights. You're looking for a place to belong. That will be a wonderful place. And don't forget the Self-Care Network, the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. And we will see you again on next week on the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. See you soon. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado. I am so delighted about bringing the Harmonize Your Life podcast to you. Would you do me a favor? If you are enjoying this, this podcast, would you email me at hello at drtonyalvarado.com? I want to hear from you. I want your feedback. I want to know if there are any other topics that you are interested in as it relates to wellness, self-care, nutrition, or just overall bringing harmony into your life. Email me, contact me at hello at drtonyalvarado.com.